well, we are back to YouTube, couldn't be more happy. And we're starting this thing off with a bang. Uh, we have a mini series that we're going to run up until the show prep series starts. And this has just been years in the making. I'm so excited for this. The, the name of this series, as you can tell from the video title, it's called The Calm. And so I wanted to tell a story why it's called The Calm because it is significant. If you know me, there's, there's always gonna be some sort of meaning behind it. Uh, but if you've heard the phrase, the calm before the storm, it's something that I have personally used for literally years. It goes back to um, my high school football days. And so <laughs> in, in football, um, when I was 15, 16 years old, my sophomore year, my team was really good. We actually went undefeated. And uh, that year I led the team in offensive yards, touchdowns, um, receptions, even interceptions on defense. And we went undefeated, so it was a pretty good season. Uh, but I remember particularly on, on one occasion, we were all on the bus as a team driving to the game. And, you know, at that point, everyone's got their headphones on, their, their beats on and stuff, and they're just like jamming to like hard rock or rap or whatever it is. And so one of my teammates asked me, like, hey, Brady, what are you listening to? And I was like, I'm listening to Jack Johnson. And they're like, you're listening to Jack Johnson? I'm like, yeah, Banana Pancakes. And they just kind of laughed because they're like, what are you, why are you listening to Jack Johnson? We're all listening to like, I don't know, like hardcore rap and stuff. And I, I said to them, I'm like, hey, just wait. This is the calm before the storm. And I had this kind of mentality that I was going to be nice and relaxed and, and kind of prepare my mind in that sort of way. Almost like, you know, the fuse had been lit. But right now I'm just waiting for the fuse um, to reach its end. And when it's time, when, when the game starts, this is gonna be a good game. So we had a great season. I was one of the team captains and, and, and life was good. And so I, I just kind of took that with me, how important it is to be uh, mentally prepared. And when you're doing something like I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm, guys, I've been in an off season for two and a half years. I love bodybuilding and I have not competed in bodybuilding in two and a half years. By the time I step on stage, it'll be a total of 34 months since I've, since I've been on a stage. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, why, you know, why not do the thing that you love to do? And it's because in order to progress, sometimes you got to step away. Sometimes you got to love something enough to not do it so that you can actually get better at it. Um, but during this, you know, two and a half years and eventually 34 months, I've been preparing my mind. One of my biggest goals through all this, obviously, yes, to get bigger, to build muscle, you know, to be better at the sport itself. But a lot of it has come down to maturing as an athlete mentally. And so through this series and especially my show prep series, I really want to, you know, share a lot of the insights uh, and philosophies I've taken with me during this process of preparation. And eventually when the time is ready, you know, the bomb will blast, the storm will hit, we'll get on that stage and do what we're uh, prepared to do. Um, but it, it's been a journey to get here, you know, even back into like football and stuff, Everyone always, my entire life, has told me what I can't do. I was told I wasn't going to make the team in eighth grade. I made the team. I was the second smallest on the team, but I made the team. My freshman year, um, no one knew who I was. I didn't get a lot of opportunity. And again, people told me that I had no future in the sport. The next year, we went undefeated and I led the team. Um, you know, I, I've always been told I can't do things, I'm not good at things, whatever. And one of the greatest lessons I've ever learned is that no other opinion matters except for my own because they don't decide what I do on a daily basis. I decide what I do on a daily basis. So through all the noise, through all the doubt, I remain calm. I'm very focused on just what I have to say about myself. Musashi, uh, one of the most famous ronins and samurais ever, he says that you have everything that you need inside of you already. And that's something we believe at Tua. We believe we have inner greatness. And no one else can tap into your own inner greatness for you. You have to do it yourself. And you do that through hard work. And, and, and I've done that. Um, I feel in a, in a very good place right now. And now we're going to capture it on this series. So welcome officially to the series. we got a, we got a long road ahead of us. It's going to be a fun one. But that's that, boys. Let's get it. Was you, was your strength maintained? Um, in some things, yeah. I, I'm just like, I refuse to let it be an excuse. Like, I'm, I, have, I have days where I'm like, wow, I'm like kind of exhausted today. I just like, 
I just throw it in the back of my mind and just pretend I'm good and go in. My sessions the last two, three weeks have been like killer. And I'm doing this on 180 cars, which isn't isn't awful, but I was on 460, you know, not that long ago. So it's a difference, that's for sure. We're, we're doing the same thing right now, but so I definitely might do it. Yeah, dude, it's just, can't make excuses, basically. Let's do it. Uncommon code first. I got number five. You have, five. you have five, Clark? Okay. I'm pretty sure five is always the one that I have. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, okay. Well, number one, work to master a physically demanding modality that pushes your body and mind. Who's got two? Number two. All right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Doug. Go ahead. Go ahead. Our greatness that exists one, and that it must be um, expressed through hard work to grow. Discovered and expressed, but yeah. Just been expressed through hard work mm -hmm. to grow. Who's got three? Resist and avoid the temptation of mediocrity that resides within everyone. Yeah, dude, I literally said that. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the exact, word for word, word for word. Who's got four? All right, I got four. All right. Pursue diligently the physical, mental, and spiritual betterment of oneself in the endeavor of purpose and passion. Nailed it. And number right. five, Clark. Serve humanity by inspiring others to live the uncommon code in order to leave a lasting impact on the world. Amen to that. Cool. Something I, I was thinking recently, um, I was listening to Two Lamb, if anyone knows who he is. I know Josh does. I know I do. Clark, yeah. Really cool guy. He's, he's an ex-Green Beret, and, and he talks all the time about how important it is to have some sort of code that you live by, especially men. And I just want to reiterate something because... We live in like the TikTok generation right now where like everyone has an attention span of like three and a half seconds. And so right now, people are surviving from like motivational quote to motivational quote to motivational quote. They just, they're bouncing back and forth ping pong brain looking for any sort of little thing to inspire them. But what we have is like a legitimate foundation, like an anchor that we call the uncommon code that is always true no matter what, and, and that's what we can stick to. So uh, I just want to reiterate, this is really important, guys, and, and the more that we can um, share this with people, like, they'll start to feel it. You know, that's something special about our culture is we go deep, you know? So anyway, we got we got a lot of stuff to cover today. Because I've seen people, people we know, not to say any names, I know people that we mutually know that need the validation and have only been told good job their whole life and people yeah, believe yeah. in them their whole life and all these things and I see now it's like that's their biggest weakness you know they don't know how to actually believe in themselves and go beyond and push themselves and all that stuff you know That there's something in the air under Brady's direction and company, and what it is is like I feel strongly like I I do not want to be mediocre. I think for so long I have victimized myself among society that I am not worth achieving the things that I want to achieve. But there's something about this brand, about this code about Brady's coaching and mentorship that honestly doesn't make me want to think about those things anymore. It makes me want to be better and find that inner greatness within myself. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. 
I'm still fueled by the ones that slumber I stand out amongst the one hit wonders So when the dust settles and the sun is under the horizon Y'all just run the numbers uh, Who the fuck won't work with me? Heart is out and I say that reluctantly Cause it should go without saying nice. But y'all playing dumb nice, nice, Far as nice. these rappers go, I'm Drive. not fearing none The cold flow is cold in any genre With Drive. many combinations Shoot like that boy sponsored by Under Armour Reach you a Ghana Arms Focus crossed in, the carpet go. like you was from Wakanda God's favorite Thing that a lot of people don't realize but bodybuilding is it's a crazy sport because of the amount of focus it takes uh, and on two different levels number one the actual set itself you know people feel tired they feel that fatigue they feel that burn they stop the set but a true bodybuilder is going to keep going and they, they keep that focus you know I always use the terms like stay in the pocket it's kind of like a quarterback like you know he does a step back and he's got five, six dudes, 350 pounds, trying to kill him. And he has to keep his composure. He has to stay in the pocket and wait for that receiver to get open. If he starts scrambling and freaking out, he's not a good quarterback. So we kind of use that same focus mentality here in our sets. It's like we go, we start to feel that pain, that burn, and we keep going. We keep that composure all the way through. We stay focused till the end. And then on a long-term scale, uh, you know, saying two and a half years of an offseason, most guys start, you know, they get bored after three months. They want a new program. They want a new goal. They chase that shiny object, wherever it is. But bodybuilding, you got to stay focused in the long term. This is an endurance sport, and it's an intense, extreme sport in every definition. So let's go. You're good. Nice. Yeah. Good. Good. You got two more? Two more. Come on. Nice. One more. One more. Up. Oh. I got you. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Up, 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 up. There it is. Last set, this is when it hurts. And you gotta remind yourself that no one cares. Let's do this.
session? It was very educational. What was it? No, it really it was. It was kind of like, because earlier we were talking about like, um, getting in the zone and being social when we work out with other people, but I like have this shift where, I don't know, I kind of analyze the whole workout as if, how do I explain it? A lion hunting its prey. Like, you know, when you watch those videos, you're just like, you're watching a documentary to see how a lion achieves its food. And so, I don't know, I guess I got in that mode where I'm just like, I am watching someone achieve something and I wanna learn from that to see how I can do the same. Replicate that. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think uh, it's it's easy when you're when you're new to bodybuilding. It's easy to like once prep starts mm -hmm. to start caring more and feel that urgency. I'm really focused on feeling the urgency, even though I'm not technically on prep. You know, like having mm -hmm. that prep urgency outside of prep. Um, or to, to be honest, I think I'm. Something I, I truly am proud of of myself this entire off season is how focused I have been. I, I haven't let anything distract me. Like I cannot think of literally any period of time in the last two and a half years that I, I've felt unfocused or just like not in a, some sort of a rhythm. Even even when I was traveling abroad and like in Hong Kong or Japan or Spain or whatever, like my sessions were great. I was hitting the gym hard. Um, you know, things weren't necessarily perfect. I wasn't, like, making my own food at home all the time. So, you know, I, I don't want to say, like, I was perfect on everything. But, like, my focus was there the entire time. And, uh, yeah, it's taken me years to get there, though, because I've always loved the gym. I've always worked hard. But I've never been so dialed in on, like, one thing for this long. So I'm happy about it. But always more work to be done, you know. I didn't want to ask you during the workout because I, I didn't want to break you out of your focus in some of your sets, but when you are at those like close to like getting to failure, because everybody is tempted to like kind of want to stop, right? Mm -hmm. I guess what is your focus when I guess you're at that point? Yeah, good question. Dude. Um, so my background on my phone, <laughs> I'll show you in the camera. It's a uh, second. And um, that's because the last time, the last class I competed in of my last show, two and a half years ago, I got a second place. And uh, second place, man, it's cool because you can almost taste the victory, but it's just a glorified losing, you know? Mm -hmm. I lost, I didn't win, like someone else beat me. So, I think about second place a lot, man. I think about second place. I, I'm done with second place, that's for sure. At the end of the day, you can only control what you can control. But I don't want to get second place anymore. So that's that. 